will be able to support the amendment. Uh, I want to support the amendment put forward so clearly by the noble Baroness Lady Heyman. Um, Lady Heyman, of course, has a very distinguished career, and we think of her as our first um, speaker in this House. But also, she has a wide experience in health and other things beyond. And I just thought, but breastfeeding? Why is she coming forward with breastfeeding? And then I understood that um, when she was in the House of Commons, the other place, uh, she was the first woman in Westminster to breastfeed. And that must have taken a lot of courage. Yeah. And I congratulate her on that. And not only that, but of course, as a Member of Parliament in the Commons, she also had uh, the skills uh, to manage the organisation of her constituency and also a new baby. And we know that new babies can be all um, encompassing. So Lady Heyman and I are fellow practitioners in breastfeeding. Um, she, I believe, has four sons. I have three sons. My aunt had six sons. And I thought the writing's on the wall. Three is plenty. And I have to say they've grown up. And they're very nice uh, young men. Um, we know the practitioners of breastfeeding. We know that breast is best. There is no argument about it. It's best for babies and it's best for mothers too. And in fact, my husband said to me the other night, it's best also for us, you know, the partners, because we don't have to get up at two in the morning to feed the baby. So he said there's a bonus there. My Lords, when I was a junior minister in your Lordship's house, I did my very best to promote designer food for babies. That is what we called it. We know that it improves the baby's immune system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, heart and <coughs> circulation, joints and muscles, and much more. It is such an important start to life. We also know that um, with uh, women, it is also, for mothers, uh, also in the short term, very important for them. Breastfeeding helps quicker recovery after birth. The uterus does contract when the woman is breastfeeding. It reduces the amount of bleeding after birth and urinary tract infection. And there are also a lot of longer term benefits, but I'm not going to go into those tonight. So my Lord, my Lords, as um, Baroness Heyman said in her introduction, it is really a public good. Despite knowing all the positives, which I've just outlined, and there are many more, the UK has one of the lowest breastfeeding rates in Europe. And I think that is troubling and disappointing. And my Lords, six years ago, I was invited by Simon Stevens, then later on Sir Simon Stevens, and then now Lord Stevens in your Lordship's house, who was the chief executive of NHS England. And he invited me to review maternity services for England. I think he had a sense of humour because he gave us nine months in which to do the report. And my lords, when we were thinking about this and we were going round England, we were listening to women, we were listening to practitioners, midwives, obstetricians, paediatricians and so on. And we thought, how can we tackle some of this? And one of the issues that came up was a programme called Continuity of Care. And the R at the end is important because all the research shows, and high quality research in Oxford uh, at the Cochrane Collaboration, it shows that if you have Continuity of Care, 
It provides a safer service, a safer service for mothers and for their babies. Mothers value knowing the same midwife, or possibly her partner as well, when her own midwife is on leave. But these midwives will look after her during pregnancy, through the birth, and provide care afterwards. My lords, no woman forgets the birth of her baby. It is a seminal time in her life. They find it much more rewarding and much safer. They know the research. They've told us it. Midwives also know the research, and they know that it is a safer way to work, and the relationship that is built is crucial in order to support the mother and the baby. There are two remarkable midwives who set up independently two different schemes, one in the north of England and one in the south. They provided this care that I'm talking about, and one system was called one-to-one. -one. It's on the tin, one-to-one. -one. And she has marked and watched and evaluated the breastfeeding rates of the women who are on the one-to-one -one system. And 98% who birthed in her units are breastfeeding. And the other one, neighbourhood midwives, which is set up in a very poor part of London, she also looked at her results and told me 94% of people of women who birthed in her particular unit uh, were breastfeeding. So we know that there are other things you can do in order to promote it. But actually, when I was looking at some of the briefing that I had from Stella Creasy MP, I mean, it is really very shaming that in 2015, Public Health England in the Start to Life, Start for Life program, found more than a third of breastfeeding mothers were very shy. They were shy about breastfeeding in public, and that put them off. And they were shy that um, they thought that people don't want them to breastfeed. I can remember being on a train, and there was this howling baby, and people in the carriage were really upset by this, and the woman just very discreetly, she fed her baby, and we were so relieved. It was terrific. <laughs> so, you know, there are ways of doing this, and I think that it is important that we try and block all the different methods that actually try and prevent women from breastfeeding. And I think that this amendment that has been uh, proposed by Baroness Heyman, I think this is another way of giving confidence to women, of ensuring that they will, they will have the law behind them. And she cited, of course, the um, uh, upskirting uh, amendment that went through. And it seems to me this is much more important. This is our future generation that we are bringing forward. And we want this generation to benefit uh, from all that I've been talking about on breastfeeding. I just want to say one thing about the Commons debate, because I thought it was interesting. And I have a lot of respect for Victoria Atkins, the MP, the minister who answered the debate. And I thought it was interesting that she said, to have us, uh, breastfeeding provides a moment of tenderness, of love, and of innocence. To have a stranger defile that moment by trying to take photographs or video it, that is not something that would occur to most decent right-thinking people. And I very much understand why this new clause has been tabled, and I want to support the mothers and the women who are facing this. And I thought, that is so encouraging. We're really getting there. But no, no. She then 
said that she had to wait for um, the uh, next part uh, that was being put forward by the Law Commission. I just think, I mean, I know this house is full of lawyers. I know this house has probably got many lawyers here who sit on the Commission. I don't know. But I just say, forgive me, but I actually think the Commission doesn't always act at speed. And what we really want is some real speed on this, because we've got a problem. We can sort this problem, or help to sort this problem. We've got this opportunity, as Baroness Heyman said, and we should take it, because we need the next generation to have the best start to life, and we know that it is in our hands to some extent. And so, my lords, I strongly support this amendment. Yeah. Well, despite being a lawyer, it's a great pleasure to follow.